Hi there. I thought I'd do a very quick video just talking about the Doncaster airport closure and how that might affect the local housing market. And uh, as ever, I really like to put things in context. So we're going to look at some other data, just talking about total employment in the area. And from there, hopefully you'll get your bearings. With that in mind, let's go. So I'm going to share a screen. And the first thing is, here's the story. So uh, the airport's closing now and 800 workers are going to lose their jobs. So <clears throat> local authority has tried to help out, but the company behind the airport have just said that it's just not economically viable and therefore they're resolute about closing it. I don't know whether it means some other airport group is going to take over or uh, or or uh, whether there's government support. As ever with these kind of things, there's so many background details which we might not really understand that are going to affect how this plays out. Like quite often uh, companies, if they go into administration, um, if they actually go into full administration and go bankrupt, as it were, then they can cut their losses and move on. And that might be the case in this case, which may explain why they didn't want to accept government support to or local authority support to keep the property, to keep the whole thing moving along. Anyway, who knows exactly how this is going to pan out, but let's assume it closes. So then the question is, well, what kind of effect does this have locally? Well, uh, the airport is here and as you see, it's quite close to Doncaster and therefore in respect to employment, really it's it's more important for Doncaster than it is for Sheffield. And once this airport is gone, then <clears throat> we're left with really Leeds or Manchester being the main local airports. And Leeds Airport is about, Leeds, Leeds Bradford International, I think, is about an hour's drive, and this is about an hour and a half, because you have to get over the, the Peak District and so on. So it is an issue, um, and uh, yeah, it's an issue. Or you can go down to East Midlands. But anyway, the question is whether 800 jobs is is a huge deal or not. And for that, I want to look at the labor market statistics. So this is from 2020 and or 21 to 22. And what they're saying is that there are about 135,000 people in Doncaster that have jobs. So in percentile terms, 800 less is less than 1%. But then there'll be collateral damage. So there'll be uh, other businesses which rely on the business of from Doncaster Airport that'll be affected. So let's say it's a total of 2,000 jobs total. That are going to be affected by this. In percentage terms, once again, it's going to be just a touch over 1%, 1 percent, one and a half percent or something like that, which is not massive, relatively speaking. It's not insignificant, but it's certainly not a massive uh, hit on the local economy. For that kind of thing, you're, if you were, for example, a big employer in a town like Aberystwyth, and let's say there was a big factory and it employed a thousand people in it, then this town would be decimated. But Doncaster is a lot bigger than Aberystwyth. To give you some kind of context on this, I've got this Center for Cities uh, site up. And this gives you a general idea of size of population, startups, and, and so on. And as you see, Manchester, two and a half million, Doncaster, 313,000. And generally, it's got slower, uh, lower population growth than Manchester. It's below average for the UK, but population growth isn't necessarily a, doesn't necessarily correlate with 
with uh, house price increases. Yes, there's less demand. But what I find at Doncaster is that uh, it's all about the area. And we'll have a look at some of the capital growth numbers in a minute. Manchester, well, it's Manchester. It's special. And and it's slightly above the national average population growth of 6.9% over over a decade. The in respect to uh, business startups, it's pretty much it's pretty close to Manchester, actually, uh, in that it's very near national average. This is slightly above, well, quite a lot above na- national average. So uh, Manchester is a very dynamic city. Doncaster does OK. And then we have. Uh, other metrics like, for example, um, unemployment, uh, public sector jobs. This is quite interesting in that that in Doncaster it's actually higher than national average, whereas in in Manchester it's lower than average. So that's an interesting fact. So obviously we have the airport closure, and the data will reflect this in time to come. And here we have ratios, and we can see that there's quite a lot more private industry in Doncaster than there is in Manchester. And I think a large amount of that is, or a large proportion of that, is to do with Doncaster being a distribution center. And uh, then the question is, if the airport ceases to trade, which it it will do, will that affect distribution because of cargo transporting and I don't know the answer to that actually uh, I, I I don't know um, but I do know that it's a, it is a big warehouse center so then the question is how are the warehouses fed I don't know anyway we can see that it's got a young population with uh, high skill so it's got it well actually it's got a uh, Right, so it's got a lower skilled population than, say, Manchester, which is slightly below national average. So London would be way higher, I assume. And again, it ties in with this idea that Doncaster is a, is a good place for warehouse workers, people like that. And we can see no formal qualifications similar to Manchester. And uh, similar there. And then we have housing. And we can see that that the housing affordability ratios are much lower in Doncaster, which is a good thing. In other words, houses are more affordable. It hasn't suffered the uh, extreme house price increases that we see across Greater Manchester. And we can see here that the ratios are nearly 9.2. And since this is a national average that we're looking at here, and that factors in the southeast of England, that's pretty high. And with Manchester, we're always very careful about where we recommend so that it is affordable, but it has good demographics. And in general, Doncaster, nice demographics, good affordability, good housing stock, which is why we recommend that. And we can see here that the mean, the the average house price is way lower in Doncaster than it is in Manchester. Uh, Manchester has had a huge influx of of investors and foreign nationals buying into it, uh, whereas Doncaster hasn't had quite the same activity. And then we have housing stock change. So so Doncaster is relatively stable, but uh, there's quite a lot of development in Manchester. And I know this, we, we see it all the time. And then we have housing stock. Obviously, Manchester is far bigger than than Doncaster. And then we have number of properties sold. And then we have this. This is quite interesting in that average earnings at £455 a week versus £513. So in other words, 50, 60 pounds in the difference, but affordability is way, way better in Doncaster. In other words, uh, prices haven't bloated yet. And if you look at the relationship between affordability and wages, then the issue with Manchester is in a large number of areas, affordability is really being stretched, which is a problem. And then we have 
internet that's not that interesting productivity is quite significant and we can see that that there are a lot more high value industries in manchester versus doncaster but it's not it's 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 a big jump but it's not a massive jump um but it nevertheless it's quite interesting in that respect and then we have the kind of the type of businesses and we can see here that uh, these high value businesses there's not that many of them whereas there's nearly double in manchester uh, but more manufacturing in doncaster and other service jobs so so that gives you a rough idea of how the two cities compare and i'm just going to do one more thing which is london I'm just going to flag up a couple of big, big differences between the two cities. So London is a city that's enlarging and uh, even though it's unaffordable to so many people. And we can see that it uh, it has a huge number of startups, double the startups per 10,000 people than than the national average. And so whenever I'm looking at cities and local economies, I'm very interested in the kind of people that want to move somewhere and the, how industrious they are. We can see here housing affordability is really bad. So there's a relationship between how, uh, how affordable property is and the kind of people that are attracted to it and how pleasant an area is and so on. And uh, broadly speaking, I think whilst Doncaster isn't the um, isn't like a high high value job area, it is a nice place and the housing stock works. So let's have a quick look at this so we can kind of round this up a little bit. And here I have the house price data for Doncaster. And there are two levels to this. There's postcode district data which is kind of generalized data but it's very current and then I have Office of National Statistics data which is always six months or slightly over six months old and what I'm looking for is the amount of red so the more red you see the greater the capital gain is over time and capital gain is a manifestation of wealth because people can afford to push the prices up and so what one's looking for is capital gain with a robust local economy. For example, Sheffield is not really that robust a local economy, yet it's got a lot of capital gain. So I'll just show you now. Here we go. And if we look at the population, so population's up, that's good. It's got below average startups per per 10,000 people, not so good. And it has uh, declining private sector jobs. Now, a lot of this is COVID, uh, the COVID factor. And you can see that, that, um, that the working age population, it's more educated than Doncaster, which is fine. Uh, it's something. Um, but when we look at housing affordability, for example, it's marginally less affordable than than Doncaster. But I do know that the rental yields don't really work in Sheffield so well. And house prices are 25 percent higher, but wages aren't necessarily that much better. And we can see here, in fact, 455 pounds versus 471. And essentially what we're looking for is the ratio of house prices over wages and the type of people that live somewhere because that determines how strong the local rental demand is. So for example, in the rental demand in general is very high, but what we see in places like Doncaster is good solid rental demand. So uh, we don't have data for every area. But we can see here 78%. So that means a property will rent out in five weeks. Here it will rent out in four weeks. And here it'll go in in one in four weeks. Uh, and so 
So it's a healthy local market, and I know it's a healthy sales market. Obviously, we've had a blip, and that's going to affect things, but I've done a video on this earlier. I, I genuinely don't see this blip being more than uh, a three or four week issue, and then I think it'll settle down, and I think the mar mortgage market will resume, but that's a different topic. If we look at, for example, rental turnover in Sheffield, uh, a lot of areas just don't have data actually, but we can see here in this little patch, it's very slow, take you months to rent in S1, and that's because there are a lot of high rise apartment properties that people just don't want to live in. Here, 13% of properties are turned over per month. And here we don't have data, no data, 140. So this area is popular and this we don't have data for. And this area is also popular. So as ever with these things, it's all quite patchy. But in terms of, of local market and capital gain and so on, the thing with with Doncaster is that it has large parts of the city which have flood risk, which makes it difficult to insure. And there is uh, there is often or there have been some serious floods in Don in Doncaster in the last. Sorry, trying to find it. Uh, let me just do something here. Right, and here I've got the flood risk map for Doncaster. And unlike other cities, uh, Doncaster has quite a lot of flood risk. So what it means is that there are lots of areas where you can pick up property really cheaply because there's serious flood risk. And as ever with Doncaster, we just have to be very careful. So. The thing with this town in general is the demographics are reasonably good. It's a healthy, economically it seems fairly healthy. Yes, it's been dented by the airport closure. Um, but overall, there are just certain parts that we, we avoid because either the demographics don't work or there's a lot of flood risk, as you see here. Um, but overall, the, so that's that. and. Uh, and if you compare flood risk to, say, Sheffield, for example, there's Barnsley and we have Sheffield, it's very little she flood risk here. But as I said, Sheffield doesn't really have the yield and in many ways the, the, the uh, housing stock isn't so good. But as I said, it does work here. You just have to be careful with flood risk, which we always are. All right. Uh, I, so to finally conclude, I think the airport closure is definitely a bad thing. I think we're going to enter a general recession anyway in this in this country. Uh, interest rates are going to keep rising, I suppose. Uh, it's generally going to toughen up. The, the thing with an airport is it'll repurpose. It'll become some kind of industrial zone or something like that. And as long as the people are industrious, and there's private investment going into the area, then it'll work. Uh, and that's why I'm generally fairly optimistic about Doncaster versus a lot of other places in the country. Uh, one piece of research I will be doing some work on is investment zones and how they might affect local economies, because there have been a number of them announced. And this is where areas have low taxation, uh, free port zones where uh, there are, uh, um, as I say, low taxes, less regulation, and it makes it easier for businesses to set up in these locations and therefore create local uh, local wealth. But based on my findings with all of that and tying into this notion about how will cities progress, what I'm seeing is it's all about the demographics. So you can have lots of incentives in certain areas, but they don't necessarily produce high value jobs. And that's because the local population is not necessarily educated enough or uh, disposed to that kind of work. And different areas have different kinds of populations. 
So uh, Manchester is is a very mixed population, which is attracting a lot of young people from London, and therefore it's this, it's attracting a, a lot of knowledge workers, and there's a lot of activity in Manchester, and it's got scale. Doncaster, as I said, it's 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 got a decent demographic, but it's not a knowledge worker economy, which isn't a bad thing, actually. It's a distribution town, and uh, and that's hopefully going to carry on despite the airport closing. I and I don't, as I said, I don't know how much that will affect things locally from a distribution point of view. Time will tell. But as long as you buy a property that's decent, it doesn't have any real condition issues, that's got a yield of over 6.5%, that's in a non-flood zone area, that's good for local uh, local amenities, then you will always rent it out and it will always be a solid investment. And I suppose in years to come, it'll gain in capital value as well. All right. Anyway, thank you very much.